Hey guys, this is Lynette Stevens. Thank you guys for joining me tonight. Um, I've never gone live on a Friday night before um, during high school football season. This is a first. So I'm kind of curious to see how it's going to go and how much uh, participation we'll actually get on the live video, but that's okay. Those of you who are enjoying your high school game in your hometown tonight, hopefully you can just catch me on the replay. Hello to my sweet friend Sherry. Thank you, dear, for all your support, not just tonight, but always. Mwah! You mean the world to me. Okay, I'm going to hop over here just a second, Miss Sherry, and um, refresh my page on my laptop so I can see any comments as we go through the live. I always hate this part, but it's necessary, so I need to do this so I can make sure and stay up with the comments. So I appreciate you guys always um, giving me a little bit of time here to get my housekeeping going when we first started live. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you for that. Um, I want to share with you guys an idea tonight to make, well, hello to my other sweet friend, Sherry, actually kind of cousin Sherry. So uh, thank you for joining me too, dear. Um, hope your husband's doing well tonight. Anyway, um, I'm going to share an idea with you guys for that I had for a cute little polka dot pumpkin. And I'm going to show the pumpkin to you first. So if you want to make one for yourself, you'll know exactly what you're looking for. I bought this pumpkin at Hobby Lobby. I think you guys can see this okay. Um, and the label just says standing pumpkin on it. It's $4.99. And I'll tell you, oh, hi, Deb. I love you. You're so good to me. Um, it's $4.99, and where you can find it at Hobby Lobby is actually on the fall aisles where they've got the wreaths and, you know, everything fall. It's actually there, so don't head back to the Bear Wood Department. You're not going to find it back there. Look on the fall aisle. It's $4.99, um, and I think it's a pretty cute little standing pumpkin for $4.99. Oh, and the best part, I almost forgot to tell you guys. They have had up until this week, and I haven't gone this week, so I don't know, but their fall stuff has been 40% off. So it's actually 40% um, off at $5, so an even better price. Um, anyway, so it's a pretty cute little pumpkin to start with, but I'm going to share my idea for how you could dress this up and use it in your home. Um, and I'm also going to give you guys a secret. A lot of you may already know this. I actually found out about this, heard about this probably on Pinterest several years ago, and I've been doing it ever since, and it makes a big difference um, to me, and I'm going to share my idea with you guys. Um, when you get buy items like this, and they have this really sticky label on it that I'm telling you guys this didn't want to come off, take your hair dryer on a hot setting, hold it on there for several seconds, I mean literally for a few seconds, start to peel one of the quarter corners, and then keep your hair dryer in one hand as you're peeling with the other, and that label just comes right off because it heats the glue up on the back side of the sticker, and you don't have to get your goo gone and scraper and try to scrape all that mess off. So it works wonderful. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna turn my phone down so that you guys ah, can watch me. I think my phone holder is trying to act up there, and I'm trying to look and see you guys let me know if you're having trouble seeing, and I'll make adjustments. Anyway, the only step I did ahead of time, other than removing the label, is I went ahead and painted the stem of my pumpkin a dark green so that when I get ready to do white, because that's what I'm going to do on the base of the pumpkin, um, that paint was already dry, and you guys didn't have to sit and um, watch me dry that with a hair dryer so we could paint. So anyway, what I'm doing is I'm just using... Um, regular household latex paint um, is what I'm going to use. You guys can use that if you've got it, or you can go to um, the craft aisle that I always tell you guys about at either Hobby Lobby um, or Walmart, and you can buy the little craft paint that comes in the smaller uh, bottles. That works great too. So craft paint, household paint, um, whatever. If you've already got something on hand, feel free to use that. And I'm just going to paint the base of the pumpkin white. I'm also going to get my edges because I want those to be painted as well. So I'm just going to uh, paint the edges white. And you will notice when I turn the pumpkin around up here, I've already painted the edge of the green of the stem too. I already did that. So 
paint the edges, and then I'm just going to finish painting the pumpkin. And one thing I think is pretty cute about this pumpkin is it looks like it's planked or slatted. It's got grooves. I don't know how well they're showing up for you guys. Um, oh, hello to my cousin Stephanie and to my niece Susie. You guys are awesome. Thank you girls for your support. Um, I wondered how this would go. You guys that just joined being a Friday night. I know it's um, high school football night and I thought I don't know how this is going to work. But I decided to try it and see. And if it works good and you guys don't have a lot going on on Friday nights, I might start doing some of my lives on Friday nights. Um, anyway, back to this pumpkin is slatted, kind of. It looks like it. It's really just grooves that are cut in. Thank you, Susie. You are so sweet. I appreciate that, dear. Um, so, you could, I don't know if you guys have seen, it's been real popular. It shows up in my Pinterest feed a lot. I think the first time I saw it was last year, maybe even the year before. There's a pumpkin, a wood pumpkin on um, Pinterest. I think it's made out of old pallet wood, and it's super popular. It's turquoise and orange, and I think creamy white, um, just kind of alternating those colors. And if you like that striped look of that pumpkin or, or one maybe you've seen, I've also seen them done black with a gray and a cream white. Those are super cute. If you like that better, maybe you're not a polka dot kind of gal, then you could easily use this little guy um, and create that same look um, that's you know filling up all of our Pinterest feeds right now. This pumpkin would be great for that absolutely great for it because it's already got the indentions and the appearance of multiple pieces of wood. So this would be a great guy to use for that. Um, and Susie, Stephanie, you guys that came on, I'm going to go ahead and paint the edge of my pumpkin too. A lot of times when I'm doing a really rustic pumpkin, kind of the stuff that you girls are used to seeing uh, in my um, pictures of my home because I have a real rustic taste so I don't do a whole lot of polka, polka dots or kind of a refined look at my house and um, I don't always paint the edges because I like that look that the paint's worn off the edge and it's not perfect but for this piece because it's going to be um, white and black and orange um, I thought that it would look better if we paint the, the edges of this one and all you girls that have either come to my classes or been to my house know that I also have a very rustic look that most things at my house get aged, have an aged appearance. I'm not going to do that. So this guy is not going to get antiqued and um, stained or anything like that when I'm done with him because that's just not the look of what I'm going for tonight. And when we get finished, I think you guys will see why. And I think you'll agree with me that this guy did not need... Um, he didn't, he, he's not going to need that antique look because this is going to be a very different look from what you guys are probably used to me doing. So I'm going to look over, make sure I'm not missing any comments. I think we're doing good. And guys, as I go along, if you guys don't understand one of the steps or um, don't understand something I'm talking about, I don't want you to be shy. Um, you ask me because I want you at the end of the video to feel like that you could run to Hobby Lobby, buy this little guy, or some other wooden pumpkin. Maybe you've already got something on hand that you're wanting to um, just style differently or, or paint or whatever. I want you guys to feel like you can tackle it by yourself. And the only way you can do that is if I've explained everything well enough and given you that confidence. So don't be shy. If I need to repeat something, please ask me. I don't mind. I would rather do that because I want you guys to get value out of my live videos. Okay, so I think our white is good. So I'm going to set our white paint aside and um, to do our polka dots, our white paint needs to be dry. So what I'm going to do, oh my sweet friend Sharon, thank you so very much and you're welcome. Thank you for joining my live video. I appreciate you, sweetheart. Um, okay, I'm going to turn on my hair dryer so you guys bear with me for just a minute. Um, I put a light coat of paint on so this part shouldn't take long. Hello to my sweet daughter-in-law, Amber. Thank you, dear. Um, let me see. My niece is asking a question. I missed the beginning. Did you buy the wooden frame already made? Yes, Susie. Let me, for all you gals, Sharon and Amber, let me tell you guys again. Just take a second here. I bought this pumpkin 
um, pre-made at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to, and I'll take a picture um, and post down in the comments too, what you guys are gonna be looking for. So here he is. It's called a Standing Pumpkin. Standing Pumpkin, it's regular $4.99. And right now they're 40, they were 40% 40 off. I don't know, Hobby Lobby may have them cheaper right now. So you girls might have to help me with the math. 60 times five, what, $3 um, is how much I paid for this guy. And where you're gonna find him, Zeus, is on the aisle where um, all the fall stuff is. So you're looking for the fall garlands and the fall, fall wreaths and the placemats. Um, it's on one of those aisles, not back in the bare wood section where you would think it would be. It's actually with the fall stuff. I don't know, maybe kind of like in the same area that I got your fall candle in. So anyway, um, if you'll head there, you'll find this guy, and that's where he is. And Sue's honestly, even if the girls, this is a simple project. So if um, Zoe and Maya would like to uh, make one. I mean, for that price, all three of you girls could do one and you could have a little set of three pumpkins. Maybe somebody does stripes, somebody does a solid, somebody does a polka dot. Super cute. You've spent, you know, $9, $10 with tax and have three really cute pumpkins. So just an idea. All right, girls, I'm gonna turn on my hair dryer for just a minute so you guys don't have to bear with me. Suze, that's a very good question. If anybody else has a question, you girls don't be shy, you ask me. So I'm gonna turn on the hair dryer, bear with me. Okay, thank you guys. Um, all right, make sure Sue didn't have another question. All right, at this point, girls, I'm going to do um, black and orange um, polka dots. And again, I am using regular household um, paint for this. You guys are welcome to use craft paint, but uh, most of you know, because you see me posting, that I do classes here around my hometown. And for my classes, I take paint in these cute little mason jars. And this is just paint that I've had from the classes over the last couple of weeks. So I'm just using it. You can, um, Suze, if you wanted to do this for your house, maybe for you, you and the girls, whatever, um, at Hobby Lobby, you can go back to the actual craft department where they have um, the craft paints and bare wood back in that part of Hobby Lobby and they have the little bottles of, um, they have the little bottles of paint. So you girls could get the smaller bottles if you want. Oh, and this is important. My polka dots, um, these are called spouncers. I'll hold it so you guys can see. These are also at Walmart and Hobby Lobby. They should be on the aisle where the paint is. They're by the paint brushes. Um, and you can buy these there. They'll come in a little pack of three or four together. So make sure um, that you pick these up if you're wanting to do the polka dots. Let me see, my cousin Stephanie. Thank you for sharing. I think my kiddos would love to do these. Oh, Steph, I guarantee you they would. These are awesome. And for, you know, three bucks, it's a cheap thing for them. And I promise they will love it. Um, okay, girls. And here's the secret to using these spouncers. I have so many people in my classes are scared of this because they've tried it over the years and it didn't turn out right. And I guarantee you, I'm, the tip I'm getting ready to give you is the reason it didn't turn out right. When you dip your spouncer in the paint, and I'm gonna show you guys, I want you to look. Okay, I've got a little more paint than I'd like to have on the bottom, but if you look at the side of my spouncer, do you see how the paint doesn't run up on it? I didn't dip my spouncer down into the paint. I barely set it on the surface of the paint where I just get an amount of paint on the bottom side of my spouncer. And then I'm going to, uh, paper plate's perfect for this or a paper towel, but I use a paper plate. You're just gonna want to um, touch your paper plate to get the excess paint off because I promise you, um, if you've tried it in the past and weren't happy with your polka dots, 
you probably had too much paint on your spouncer, and that's why it ended up looking more like a glob than a polka dot. So the secret is get that excess paint off. And then when you put your spouncer down, you wanna sit it and apply firm pressure, but not heavy pressure. Because if you put too much pressure, once again, um, paint can squish out around the edges and leak out here and there and ruin your polka dot. So firm pressure, but not hard. So I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about. And I am not gonna do a pattern I am putting polka dots just wherever I feel like putting polka dots. I'm going to do the size I'm using now, and then I've also got a smaller spouncer, and I'm going to do my orange and my black using both of these different sizes, okay? So, um, hi to my friend Tammy and my friend Kelly and my sweet cousin Nicole. Thank you guys for joining me, and if you guys have any questions, I'll kind of do a little recap at the end for those of you that have come on later, but if you have questions as I'm going along, um, ask me and I'll stop and answer those for you guys. Okay, so I'm just going to start till my heart's content figuring out where I might want um, some orange bigger size polka dots. Um, the other thing that I think in my mind is important when you're doing a polka dot pattern is to not have all the polka dots be perfectly positioned within the pumpkin. In other words, you should have like this big guy. I'm going to purposely run them off of the edge of my pumpkin. Does that make sense? Where it's just a half of a polka dot, a little more than a half of a polka dot, so that it looks kind of legitimate because otherwise it looks too perfect and that might be part of what you haven't liked in the past. So just make sure that here and there you've got a part of a polka dot um, and you can do them different. You know, on one of them, have it be a quarter um, of your polka dot is showing. Another one, maybe a half. Mix it up because then it looks more legitimate if you do it that way. Um, now I'm going to switch and I'm just going to do my orange paint at the same time here. Um, so I'm going to do my, my large and my small polka dots with my orange. And I'm just going to kind of willy-nilly put these guys on. And then I'm not going to wash my, um, oh, let's see, let's stick another guy down here. I'm not going to wash um, my spouncers yet or put my paint away because when you're doing polka dots, um, especially if you do them the way I do them, um, hi to my sweet friend Felicia, thank you for joining me tonight, dear. Um, when you're doing polka dots, I like to put fewer to start with of each color and then look at it. If I'm happy with it, great. If not, I can add, you know, a small orange or a little black wherever I think it needs it. If you put too many, another thing that maybe in the past you've done, because I've done it, and then I go, huh, that doesn't look too good. There's way too many polka dots. So I start off a little more sparingly and then um, go back and add them if I feel like I need them. And I promise that'll make you a lot happier too. Okay, so now I'm going to go and I'm going to add some of my big uh, black polka dots in a few places. And like I said, we need to run a couple of them off of the edge so that that looks legitimate. Maybe one more up here on this guy. Get him there, okay. And then move on to the small black. Put that on. Girls, I'd be curious uh, to hear from you guys too if you think Friday nights are a good time for lives. Um, if it's a good time for you guys, that works for me and I could start doing and more of these on a Friday night. So you guys let me know um, if Friday nights work for you. Uh, let's see, maybe a half of a guy here. And I look like that would be too many black ones right there together. So maybe just, I think I want an orange one right there. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just looking to see, and it's okay guys. Um, another thing I've heard from some of you guys that have come to my classes is you think all of the polka dots have to be perfect with the exact right amount or same amount of paint each time. Not true. Do you see how some of my polka dots are more filled in and some are, um, you know, less dense? That just, to me anyway, my opinion, it just leads a little more to the um, authentic look and feel of the pattern. 
So I don't worry about that. If you've noticed on a couple of these, I haven't even gone back and dipped in the paint. I've done two polka dots from one paint dip. So that's another thing that might help you guys um, and make you feel a little bit better about um, your polka dot pattern. I'm trying to decide, I think I want maybe one more little orange guy, and then I think we're gonna stop in the polka dots and finish, or we're gonna add our other embellishments to it and then decide if we think it needs anything else because honestly, I think I'm kind of liking the, what we've got going on here. So I think we're gonna stop for a minute. Push this aside just a second. And then, um, you know, and if you guys want at this point, I'm gonna turn around so you guys can see it a little better. Um, if you wanted to, you could just stop here. Um, hi Shelly, thank you for joining me there. You could stop here and maybe just tie like a raffia bow around the top if that's your thing or you want something just simple or you could do um you know a bow with some sort of um ribbon like this you know a simple bow and tie it at the top um if you want but i'm going to show you guys um a bow that i like to make that's i think is super easy so you can use the bow i'm getting ready to teach you for um you know, embellishing things like a wood pumpkin, or you can use it uh, as a bow on top of your gift packages or whatever. So I'm gonna share this idea with you guys. And um, I came up with this several years ago when um, I was making bows for my grandbabies, for my little granddaughters. Um, a lot of the big fancy bows to me just seemed too complicated. I couldn't figure it all out, feel like I needed a third hand. So I came up with um, kind of an alternative to it and I think it worked out good. So that I've been doing it for several years now. So I'm gonna show you guys what I do and maybe it will help you be a little more confident when it comes to making bows. So what I need to do is I'm gonna lay the pumpkin down for just a second. And if you guys will bear with me, I just realized this paint is still pretty wet. I'm gonna dry these polka dots real quick, especially up at the top, because I'm gonna show you guys how I kind of go about deciding how big the bow should be. So let me turn this on for just a minute, bear with me. Okay, sorry about that. I think that's dry enough that um, it won't get all over me if I accidentally touch it. So what I do, I'm gonna make sure, can you guys see the top good enough? I think you can, it looks like it. If I need to move it, please tell me. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure, and you guys are gonna laugh when I tell you what my first material is that I'm gonna use to make the bow. Uh, yeah, you know when you buy like the um, scented pine cones this time of year or the big, um, I call it like potpourri replacement. It's like bowl fillers, you know, it's got the pumpkins and the pine cones and acorns and all of that. Well, the little netting that it comes in, that bag, yeah, I save stuff like that. I know, it's weird, but I save it. And I'm always glad I save it at a time like this because this is gonna end up being the base of my bow because with the polka dots, and um, with the black polka dots, I think that this black netting is super cute. And, excuse me, and to me, the netting itself almost kind of just hints at Halloween or, I don't know, I just love it. So I'm glad I hung on to this. Uh, anyway, so you might start thinking if you want to build up a little craft, um, I call it my craft stash, um, to save things like this and throw it in with your other ribbons and bows and, and embellishments because I think you'll probably find like I have that at some time it'll come in handy. So I'm gonna lay this down and kind of just look because this is gonna be the bottom of my bow, if you will. It's not really gonna be a bow, but that's just what I'm calling it. Okay, and I think I kind of want it to be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna cut 
Uh, I'll get my scissors over here and I'm going to cut the excess off. Okay, throw that aside. All right, so now we know we don't need to measure anything else that's going on our bow because we've got the base of our bow, if you will, and that tells us um, kind of what size everything else needs to be. So I'm going to, and I'm purposely kind of fluffing that out, and then if the edges are, if it's too big when we put it on, then we can just pull it back together. But um, I have just picked colors that I thought would look neat and complement our orange and black um, polka dots. So I chose this orange gingham rib ribbon, and I am going to start by, oh, let's see. I'm going to start by just cutting one of those, and we're going to look, because what I don't want to do, because our pumpkin is not huge um, thickness or in height, girth, size, so I don't want to overwhelm the pumpkin and have it too big. So I'm thinking that maybe um, just one piece of the uh, orange gingham may be all that we need, because it's kind of um, wider ribbon to begin with. So we're just going to lay it down. And then I've chose a black and white that I'm going to use them with it. And because the black and white is a little smaller, um, and guys, I'm cutting the ends of my ribbon um, at angles, but you can you can style yours, cut yours however you want. You can leave them uh, you can leave them square if you want. That's just a personal preference. So I'm going to do two pieces of the black and white just because it's not as wide of a ribbon and then I've chose just this orange it's like a um, thinner probably quarter inch style uh, ribbon and I'm going to use two of these at least as well and I know I'm going to crisscross those because it's smaller as um, kind of like the black is so I'm going to use two of those to start with and we'll look at it, and if we decide that it needs something else, we'll add something else. But to start with, I'm going to start there and hold it back up to our pumpkin and see what we think. Let me get him back here so you guys can look with me. And we'll see what we think about our ribbon. And you may have to be careful about when you're pinching your ribbon here in the middle, um, just be careful. I, I should have showed you guys before I quickly turned it over, but this black and white guy had gotten turned upside down, and I don't want to lose the black and white print, so I just made sure that I let go of my pinched section here in the middle and straightened that guy up um, so that he is where I want him. And then I can look and see that maybe these guys could use a little straightening up. And when you're happy with it, which I honestly think I like this, we're going to hold it here and make sure. And here's the thing, guys. At this point, we can go ahead and pinch him and attach him to our pumpkin. And then if we think he's too big, you can take your scissors and trim him down after he's already attached to the pumpkin. Um, but I kind of like him. He's a little bit um, big for it, but I think that's cute. So we're going to go with him just like he is. And what I'm going to do is... I'm going to use a piece of my orange uh, ribbon to tie all of this together, and I'm just going to hang on to it. Now, I don't want to go too fast. I want you guys to be able to see this. So, I'm just going to hang on to it with my thumb and finger, turn it over, kind of lay it down, and then use my hands to hold it there while I tie the ribbon. You guys tell me if I did that too fast. Um, thank you, Kelly. Hopefully, I didn't go too fast for you guys. And then I'm just going to tie this in a knot. So I'm going to tie it one more time to make sure it stays good and tight, okay? And then you turn it over, and I'm going to work with it for just a minute because, like I said, see this guy's trying to turn over on me? So I'm just going to grab him and turn him back over where I tied it together so that we can see the black and white side of our ribbon, because just seeing the black side to me isn't near as pretty. So I'm just gonna straighten it up, pull things um, until I like how it looks. And I think I'm pretty happy with this. Turn that that way. 
Okay, so anybody who's been scared to make any kind of ribbon, I don't know how many of you girls are in that category, but I know for years I really was. Um, this is super easy and turns out really, really cute. So, um, and you can make this as full as you want, you know, by adding additional ribbons. Um, I've even, on a lot of the hair bows that I've done um, for little girls, I have done loops in the, the ribbon. So I could have taken like my orange and white gingham, you know, and done a loop. Um, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about because that may not make sense with me just saying it. So let me show you. So you just do like a loop, like so. Okay, you guys see what I did? I'm just taking the ribbon, folding it back kind of against itself, like so. And then you just put that in, see how that looks? Now, it, your, your bow could even look a little fancier, especially if like this ribbon has the wire on the edge. When you're using it, that really makes a nice looking um, bow. So you can even add a little more to it and it's not all just flat like the one I did tonight. But for our pumpkin, I thought simple um, with a flat look would work fine for him. So that's that. And then I'm gonna show you guys something else I picked up at Hobby Lobby. So. On the same aisle where all the fall stuff is, they've got kind of a section that's more Halloween. And in that section, they've got all kinds of cute, just Halloween decorations. And one of the things I found was a little three pack of these cute little signs. And they're just on, you know, a piece of rope. Um, there was trick or treat, Halloween, and boo are the three that are on there. And I picked those up because I thought, and I'm gonna turn this around where you guys can see it. I might need to bring this up just a hair. Eh, let me see if it's gonna stay there. So I thought that hanging this guy um, around, just a little additional um, embellishment is super cute. And then what I'm gonna do, because I've kind of got these tails left on our bow, I'm gonna see if these are long enough to tie this on, and I think they are. But if they aren't, um, you can use a thin wire, like this is the florist wire that you can find in the floral department. You could use this and turn your bow to the back side and just run this right underneath where you've tied it and make sure and leave it long enough that you could wrap it around the stem of your pumpkin and attach your bow that way. But the tails of my ribbon are long enough so I can just use those. So I'm going to put the bow here and Tie it on, and let's see. I'm gonna turn it around for just a second, guys, so I can make sure that I'm getting the ribbon where it needs to be, and then I'll turn it back around for you guys in a minute. And we'll see if I can get this where I like it. And if not, I may be using the wire myself. Gotta decide if I wanna see that ribbon or not. Okay, I think that'll work. Let me see. Okay, let me see here. Yep, I think that'll work just fine. Now back here, I'm gonna have to trim this off so that you won't see that ribbon sticking up from the back backside. Um, and like I said, you guys can make your bow smaller. You can use all ribbon with wired edges if you want, but I kinda like this simple look of this bow. So I'm gonna turn around so you guys, ta-da, there's the finished product. So, for something that costs, what we decided our pumpkin was three dollars, um, and a little bit of paint, and then some ribbon that you may already have laying around. I'm going to turn this up so you guys can, so I can see you guys. Um, to turn it cute. So I don't know what is going on with my phone holder. Guys, I am so sorry. That doesn't want to work. There, that's better. Anyway, I'm going to hold it up so you guys can see. So for something that, um we didn't spend very much money on, I think it's pretty cute. And I'm not even a polka dot kind of gal, but I don't know, I'd probably use this in my house. I think it's pretty stinky cute. So um, I will go down in the comments and I'll see if I can go to Hobby Lobby's site and find this exact pumpkin and I'll post it for you guys. So you'll know exactly the one you're looking for. And I'll see if I can even find these cute little wood signs. I think they're really more intended for like an ornament for your fall tree. Um, so, oh, Sherry, tell your sweet granddaughter I said thank you. That's so sweet of her. Um, anyway, I think it's pretty cute. I don't think it looks like we paid $3 for the pumpkin. 
So I don't know, you guys tell me what you think. But like I said, you don't have to do polka dot. If you're not into polka dot, you could paint this guy traditional orange. Um, you could paint this guy, if you're one of the gals that's really into teal right now, and that's really popular, the teal pumpkins are super cute. So you might do your pumpkin teal, or maybe you wanna do him this creamy white and change up the color of your polka dots. Uh, do gray ones, and then maybe your bow could be the teal. I don't know, you guys use your imagination, but um, Tammy, thank you. Cheryl, thank you. I'm excited to see you two gals next week. So we've got our palette pumpkin class coming up, and I'm excited to see both of you. So um, anyway, so there you have it. Cute little polka dot pumpkin that you don't have to spend a whole lot on. Um, the other thing I thought that these would be fun for, and I think it's what I'm actually gonna use mine for, is um, we are going on um, Halloween night. We have a tradition where we go with our um, son, Callan, and our daughter-in-law, Stacy, and our sweet little grandbabies, Casey and Hartley. We go trick-or-treating with them every year. And we go trick-or-treating in a neighborhood Susie, thank you. Susie, I kind of thought you might love this. I don't know. Something about this to me just kind of looks like your thing, even with the cute little sign. And if you and the girls do them, there's three of these little signs in the pack. I think they were $2.99 and then 40% off. So this would be a super cute thing for you to do for your house, Suze. Um, Kelly, see, Kelly, that's how I feel. And I'm not even a polka dot gal, but these gals been doing these polka dot pumpkins that kind of gave me the fever and it's not my deal. Anyway, back to my story. So we go every year, it's our tradition to go um, to Callan and Stacey's friend's house and we go trick-or-treating with them and their friends. And um, Claudia and Rodney are sweet enough to host our um, Halloween dinner and our trick-or-treat night the last couple of years. And um, I have decided that I think I'm gonna take this to Claudia as a little thank you for always opening up her home to all of us. So I think I'm gonna give mine away um, to Claudia. So I don't think, I don't even know if she's on Facebook, but I know she's not on my page, so I don't think she'll um, see this and hopefully it'll be a surprise for her. But that's what I'm gonna do with mine. But if you guys go, if you've got some Halloween party that you're going to and you want a cute little hostess gift that you could take and um, show your appreciation uh, to the hostess for hosting the party at her home, this would be a super cute thing. And, and I don't know about you guys, but I don't think she's going to look at that and think you spent, you know, ribbon and all $5 on it. So um, that's another idea I think that you could do with this because I'm definitely going to take mine and give it to Claudia. So that's my idea. Anyway, I appreciate you guys. Thank you, um, Suze, Kelly, all you gals that stuck with me through the whole video. I appreciate that. And um, I know I say this all the time and things happen and it doesn't happen. But guys, I promise you, I am really, really, really trying to um, be able to come to you guys more often um, with you know DIY projects, sharing things in our home. So hopefully, hopefully, um, I can get better about coming on and spending more time with you guys. And I don't know, I'm gonna be real honest and transparent with you guys tonight. I don't know how many of you remember, and I know some of you are probably newer to my page and don't even know what I'm talking about, but our stained concrete floors, they, um, they look hideous right now. They're hideous, um, and they're embarrassing to me. So, uh, Larry and I, bless his heart, he's been trying, we've been trying to come up with a solution and something that we can do because right now, quite honestly, we can't afford to go get all new flooring put in our house. So we're gonna have to try to do something to fix our concrete floors. And um, so far the things we've tried haven't really worked. So I'm telling you that to tell you that I would be going live uh, more often in other parts of my house and sharing parts of my fall decor with you guys if it wasn't for these hideous floors. So that's been keeping me from really sharing a lot of things with you guys for the last few months. And Lana, thank you so much, I appreciate that. Um, Lana, my sweet cousin who's the hairdresser would notice my hair, thank you. Um, anyway, I, to be totally honest with you, I'm trying to just tell myself that you guys don't care what my concrete floors look like and that I just need to go ahead and go live in my home and show things to you guys in spite of these hideous floors. So if you guys bear with me, I'm trying to get over my phobia about it um, and start sharing more things from inside our home. So I think I'm gonna try to just psych myself up and go, you know, it is what it is. 
and uh, start sharing more things with you guys and not always just staying here where I've got this perfect looking backdrop and you can't see my floors. So I'm gonna try to get past that. Cheryl, you are the sweetest. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Um, I'm gonna try to get over that phobia and try to convince myself that you guys can look past the floors, that you won't judge me based on the condition of my ugly, hideous concrete floors. So anyway, um, I'm gonna try to work on that and hopefully I can go live in other parts of my home um, because I really do have a lot of fun things I wanna share with you guys and some tips and ideas. So I'm gonna try to get past it and um, be able to share more things with you guys. So um, let's see. Sherry, you are awesome. Thank you so much for all of your support. You are so good to me. You are so good to me. Um, oh, Sherry saying that reminds me, everybody that is local to the Oklahoma City area, um, you know that for the last few years, we've got this wonderful show that happens in our hometown of Jones twice a year, the first weekend in May, and then again, the first weekend in September. It's the Old Chicken Farm Vintage Barn Sale. And I'm gonna drop uh, uh, down in the comments, I will drop their Facebook page so you guys can go follow them if you don't already. Well, Patty, who owns the chicken farm, has decided that she's going to do a Christmas show this year. I'm so excited. I am so excited. I am so excited. It's going to be great. She's going to have campfires going, wood chairs sit around the fire, so if you get cold, because by the way, this is an outdoor show. It's at a chicken farm. But if you get um, cold, you can go sit by the fire to warm up. Um, but there's going to be vendor booths, there's going to be food booths, um, lots of Christmas lights. It is going to be wonderful. And what reminded me is that Sherry is um, Patty's cousin, and Sherry works at the shows. So it reminded me when she said something, um, but I haven't announced it yet, so all of you watching my live tonight are finding out first. Um, I'll probably announce it on the page maybe later tonight. Maybe Sunday night. I don't know when I'm going to tell everyone else, but Larry and I um, signed up today to have a booth there, so I'm really stinking excited about it. Um, we've already got a list made of cute things that we're going to make for Christmas decor, so I can't wait. Tammy, it is going to be during the day. Um, I think, Sh Sherry, if you, honey, do you remember what the times are? I want to say it said 9 to 4. Sherry, do you know if that's right? Tammy's asking what time the um, Christmas show is going to be. I really think it's 9 to 4. Felicia, I'm very sad that you can't be there. It won't be the same without you there. I don't know how I'm going to run and talk to you all day. So, wish you didn't already have another show. But anyway, um, I'll see you before now and then. Because, after all, I do need to come pick up my um, cute little shawl that you made me. So, i got to holler at you and meet you for breakfast or lunch next week so I can get that from you. Um, okay, so Sherry says yes. I think it's 9 to 4. But you guys, listen. This is going to be an awesome show, an awesome show. The environment there is wonderful. The vendors that come have the cutest stuff ever. So if you're in the Oklahoma City area, honestly, mm, I might even have to talk to my um, Texas niece and see if I can talk her into coming because it's going to be so much fun. And it would be worth the drive. It really would. It's going to be a great show. So anyway, I'm excited about that. Um, you guys are the first to know, but mark your calendars. It is the Saturday after Thanksgiving, November 24th. I need to tell you that. I guess that's important. November 24th, the day after Saturday. So if the guys are hunting or they're watching ball games or whatever, and you're looking for something fun to do that Saturday, this is where you're going to want to be because it is going to be an awesome, awesome show. And yeah, it's probably going to be a little cool. Who cares? It's going to be worth it. It's going to be so much fun. And I talked to Patty today, and the food vendors, uh, a couple of the food vendors are coming. They're going to have, um, you know, coffee and hot chocolate. I mean, how fun is that? Get your hot drink and shop um, for Christmas gifts, not just decor. There's going to be Christmas gift items that you can buy, too. So you could come and start knocking out a lot of your Christmas shopping that day. So anyway, I'm excited about that. Very excited about that. And like I said, if you live even two, three hours out from Oklahoma City, it'd be worth the drive. I mean, how fun is this going to be at an old chicken farm? It's a great show. So anyway, I'll get that announcement uh, up on my page. But 
you guys um, make sure and invite your girlfriends and your um, neighbors and coworkers or whoever and tell them about it once I post it. Maybe you can even just share it with them. So, um, and the other thing I was going to ask you guys, if you guys um, like my pumpkin that I made tonight and you think it's worth it, I would appreciate you guys sharing my video on your page or tagging any friends that you think would want to um, make a cute little polka dot pumpkin. So if you guys would either share my video or tag your friends uh, in the comments of this video, I would greatly appreciate it. So anyway, girls, I think that's all I have tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and get off and I appreciate you guys so much. And I'm hoping to be back on in a couple of days because I've got $1 pumpkins that I'm going to show you guys. Cheryl, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I've got $1 pumpkins that I am going to um, show you guys how you can dress them up and turn them into pumpkins that don't look like you paid a dollar for them. So I'm going to be working on those two in the next couple of nights. Kelly, I can't wait to see you too, Sam. So I'm excited. I'm excited about our palette pumpkin class because they're going to be so cute. So cute. I can't wait. So um, anyway, I'll be back on in a couple of nights and show you guys what you can do with little $1 pumpkins. And uh, hopefully you guys will like them and attempt to make them at home. Oh, and if you guys decide to buy this little $4.99 pumpkin, whether you do polka dots or the stripes that I talked about, or a solid color, and um, maybe you take it in a completely different direction than I did, but it just, um, um, you know, spurs some idea on in your cute little brain, and you want to uh, make a $4.99 pumpkin, $3 pumpkin, um, post a picture of it for me. Come back to this video and post a picture in the comments so that I can see it, because there is nothing that makes me happier than seeing you guys take what I'm teaching you and go make your own. I love that. So make sure and come back and, and uh, give me a picture. I'm going to take a picture of this guy and post him um, for you guys too, along with um, links or at least a list of where you can buy everything that you need um, to duplicate this pumpkin. So anyway, I appreciate you guys. Sure, I'm excited to see you Tuesday night. I can't wait. So anyway, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for all your support. And hopefully I'll see you guys again in a couple of days. So thank you. Mwah. Night.